Pretty recently, most of the Counter-Strike community was exposed to a lot of glitches at the launch of Counter-Strike 2, and as horrible as these were to be on the receiving end of, a lot of them were actually really cool. Like, stupidly cool. Wait, they're flying! They're over the, over the fucking sky, guys! Bro, what the fuck? Now look, I'm not here to talk about the insane amount of glitches in Counter-Strike 2, but it did help give me an idea. With all these cool glitches in Counter-Strike 2, there had to have been some cool ones in older Counter-Strike titles. And of course, the answer was yes. And after working quite hard to find all these, I'm happy to bring you an extensive list of glitches or bugs from Counter-Strike's past. Some of these haven't even really been truly documented or talked about in quite a while. I also won't be talking about hack or cheat exploits because this video would be way too long. To start, we're gonna have to go way back, as far back as the original Counter-Strike released in 1999. I'm not gonna be labeling the versions of the original Counter-Strike because as far as I know, some of these glitches have been present since version 1.0 to 1.1 to 1.2 and so on. So I'll just be calling this Counter-Strike 1. I'm sure there were plenty of glitches and bugs in Counter-Strike 1, but the thing is, is that since it was from the dinosaur era, it is very hard to find traces of them on the internet, especially when the YouTube of the time mainly consisted of this. Just expect way more documented glitches in CSGO than the older games, which you can see on screen with the listed amount of glitches I'm going to talk about for each game. The first interesting glitch is one that some OG players might remember. This glitch is rightfully called the ceiling boost glitch, which you might be able to picture just from the name. This glitch would pretty much just allow you to face through a ceiling if you boosted on another player while they were jumping. You could even boost onto the skybox in certain spots like you see here, which didn't seem too useful in my opinion, but this glitch was mainly used to get players up to odd spots that you wouldn't normally be able to get up to. This video I found about glitches in Counter-Strike 1 was 90% of the ceiling boost glitch, so it seemed like it'd be a pretty common glitch or exploit you'd come across. Shout out to Okito for actually documenting these. The most interesting application I saw for this glitch was to pretty much teleport the VIP all the way up to the escape on oil rig. Moving on to the next glitch, pixel grenades. This glitch or bug would allow players to throw grenades through pixel wide gaps, and that's really as simple as it was. For some reason the grenades in this game had a one pixel hitbox which would let the grenades pass through one pixel gaps. I am kind of pulling that fact out of my ass, but as far as I've seen they can go through one pixel gaps, so I think my hypothesis is correct. Thankfully so, because the grenades in this game were absolutely massive. This is what also created another glitch where if a flashbang exploded inside of one of those pixel gaps, it would sometimes blind players in a large area and you couldn't even look away from them. The grenades in general in this game were quite silly and very buggy at times. Next glitch, illegal bomb plants. This glitch requires a player to plant the C4 in a very precise spot that would sometimes make the C4 phase out of the map into undefusable areas. One of these ways was planting on top of a teammate in a certain way. I'm not sure if the C4 always slowly floated down like this, but uh, pretty cool. There's also another glitch that would make the bomb completely silent if planted in a certain spot, which was usually inside of walls. I actually witnessed someone doing this while I was making my Counter-Strike Next on Studio video. You're doing the silent plant? No fucking way. Next, infinite grenade bounce. This glitch or bug is quite simple to explain. Just think of the grenade bouncing sound, and now think of it going off about a hundred times a second. There you go. For some reason in older builds of Counter-Strike, if you threw a grenade at the correct angle, they would just get stuck bouncing and start bugging out. This wasn't useful at all other than to just annoy the fuck out of your teammates or the enemies. And as far as explaining why this glitch happened, I have no clue other than probably just a physics bug. Like I said, the grenades in this game were very buggy. Moving on to a silly one, Infinite Man Boost. Yes, Counter-Strike 1 had no limit on the amount of players that could be stacked, which would probably allow for some insane boost spots. Like I said, it's pretty hard to find footage from the Dinosaur Age internet, but I'd imagine it going something like this. Get fucked. From pictures I can find, it seems like it was something that was tested to its absolute limits. Of course, in the Counter-Strike we have today, there is a limit of two players that can be properly stacked. Anything over that will just start to slide off. Now onto a glitch that was most likely abused quite a lot by the tryhards. This is what the cool kids would call duck peeking. This glitch was insanely easy to do. All you had to do was tap the crouch button. That's it. For some reason, when you did this, it'd send your view up very quickly so you could peek over an object and get information without much risk. There's also another version of this, but this time while moving. This was called silent running or running. Russian walking. Here's an awesome tutorial I found for it in 2013, which honestly looks like it could have been posted in 2005.
I don't exactly know if this silent running was indeed silent, but I'm pretty sure it was. But I assume it also did cause quite a hard target to hit with your hitbox jumping up within a frame. Obviously, I know there's a lot more Counter-Strike 1.0 to 1.6 glitches and bugs, but these were all the documented ones I could really find. So let me know if you remember some and please let me know in the comments. Now let's quickly move on to Counter-Strike Source. And yes, I am going to skip Condition Zero because no one cares about it. Sorry, not sorry. Sadly, there still aren't as many documented glitches on this game as well because it's pretty old and it was not as popular as Counter-Strike 1. This is also the YouTube we're now working with here. First glitch or bug up is just how insanely fast the running speed is with the scout. And it is still a thing that you can test yourself with this command right here. Looking at the velocity, you can see that running with the scout is faster than running with your knife. Now, it's not a lot faster than the knife, but it's still pretty insane that you can not only run faster than basically anyone, but that you can also do it with your gun equipped. The next one is either a glitch or an exploit, depending on who you ask. It's not a glitch, it's an exploit. There's a difference. And only noobs say it's the same thing. This exploit of course being the infamous Counter-Strike Source bunny hopping. I talked about this in my controversies video and how it related to Foon, but most of you should know what I'm talking about. Bunny hopping this fast was never intended to be a thing if that surprises you. So they of course eventually patched it in all Source games. In my video that I did talk about it in, I did get some stuff wrong. Especially the fact that the backwards b-hop was not possible anymore. The bunny hopping was even nerfed in Half-Life 2 as well, which is why you can no longer do the infamous backwards b-hop in Half-Life 2. The bunny hopping... It's actually the exact opposite. Valve did put a velocity cap on forward movement to prevent bunny hopping, but they didn't think about the fact that backwards velocity also needed to be capped, thus actually creating the backwards b-hop that you now see people doing in Half-Life speedruns. Sorry for spreading misinformation. The next glitch is one I had been looking forward to talking about since the very beginning of this video, and it was even in CSGO. This glitch is called flash boosting. This glitch consists of one player standing above or jumping over another player, while the bottom player throws a flashbang, and then the top player rides on that flashbang hitbox, allowing you to boost to impossible spots or just catch the enemies off guard. I'm pretty sure this was also possible with smoke grenades, but it was a lot more commonly done with a flashbang. It's pretty much rocket riding from Fortnite, but in Counter-Strike. A very iconic glitch. Now don't even get me started on map glitches because there were so many. If I talked about them all in this video, it would probably be like an hour long. Some pretty notable ones though were a bunch of pixel jumps on maps like Assault, Parkour on Chateau, boosting on B-side on Nuke, which you could even defuse the bomb underneath the floor from here. This was also possible on CSGO in the older versions of Nuke, but was of course fixed. There are obviously a lot of map glitches in older Counter-Strikes as well, but for some reason Counter-Strike Source had a lot more than the other games. For the last couple of glitches on Source, I actually got the help of Counter-Strike legend Lol Yu, since I couldn't find any. And I really tried, but Counter-Strike Source hardly has any documented glitches. One of the glitches he talked about was called Super Boosting, where if you jumped on someone's head in the right way, it'd give you a Super Boost, hence the name Super Boost. Another glitch was the classic Run Boost, which is still able to be done on CS2 and was common in CSGO. It worked the same in Counter-Strike Source, where you just run on top of someone's head in the same direction and then jump off, which would give you a boost. Lastly, there was a packet sending exploit that LoLu had found that pretty much just lag switched the game. I don't exactly know how it worked, but you could lag out the server, get behind the enemy, and kill them without them even seeing you. Thankfully, this glitch stuck to just lull you and didn't spread at all, and then it was quickly fixed. That's pretty much all the glitches I can find on Counter-Strike Source, so it's time to move on to the game that had the most glitches, other than Counter-Strike 2. Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Fast laddering. This one was a very necessary bug to use if you were into movement at all. And to be honest, even if you weren't into movement, you probably should have known how to do this. But if you don't know, it's still doable in Counter-Strike 2, so pay attention. Fast laddering is when you go up a ladder looking sideways or diagonally, while also using your side strafe key to push into the ladder. This is indeed the fastest way to go up ladders. Way faster than just going up them straight on. Fast laddering even worked in CS1 and Source, but I think it's a lot more iconic in this game, and I'm pretty sure it was also faster. Now how could I not talk about glitches and bugs in CSGO without talking about edge bugs. And who else is more experienced with edge bugs than the man Franz J himself? What's up guys, Professional Edger here, here to explain edge bugs. So basically, you're here, edge is here. One tick, you're here. Next tick, you're here. Game interpolates and then you surf on the edge. No fall damage. Boom. No problem guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks Franz. In other words, edge bugs are spots in the map geometry that allow you to take no fall damage. This is done by landing perfectly on these spots right at the end of the fall, like seen here. You take no fall damage from this because you basically surf on the ledge for a split second, which resets your falling velocity. And if you do that at the very end of the fall, the game will just assume that you shouldn't take any damage due to tick interpolation. 
flash boosting. Like I talked about earlier, flash boosting was possible in this game. This glitch was done a lot, especially on Old Nuke where you could flash boost above garage. For some reason, the rooftop on top of garage didn't have any barriers stopping you from going up there, so you could pretty much get out of the map if you wanted. This glitch was of course quickly patched because if it wasn't, it would have been abused quite a lot. Next glitch, the falling glitch. Back in the day, if you ever found yourself wedged in an odd spot and getting stuck, well, you may as well have considered yourself dead. Even the man 3 clicks Philip made a video about this glitch and it was very well known at the time. Basically, if you got stuck in certain parts around the map, especially spots with props or weird corners, the game would think you're falling down before eventually building up an immense amount of speed and then launching you straight towards the ground within a fraction of a second. I'm pretty sure most if not all these buggy areas were fixed eventually, but it's a pretty common bug in Source games in general. Train Bird Boost. This one is probably my favorite of the bunch just because how simple and stupid it is. On Train, there used to be these two little birds right here. What was so special about them is they had collisions. And not only did they have collisions, but they would also fly away if you started to approach them. So if you got to these birds fast enough, you could jump onto them and then fly away into the sky. That's basically all it was. And it wasn't very useful at all, but it's still my favorite one here. This was quickly fixed by just removing the birds, which I guess is a quick fix. The coaching bug and its scandal. Coaches in CSGO used and abused this bug for quite some time. Coaches in CSGO tournaments were supposed to be able to only spectate their players and their players only, just because it would obviously be unfair if they could see the enemies. The coaches were also able to give their team information from this view, especially any information that their teammates might have missed. This coaching bug would allow these coaches to get out of their player's view and instead see the entire map along with the enemies, which I'm sure you can understand why this would be so problematic. These coaches didn't come forward with this exploit for a very long time, silently plotting and abusing this glitch behind the scenes until a coach by the name Marius Cybulski revealed it to the public by posting about it on Twitter, and thus a total of 37 coaches were banned for abusing it. Valve swiftly fixed this bug the same day it was exposed, or so they thought. Someone showed them that they could still recreate it the same day they fixed it. So Valve just decided that they were going to outright ban coaches from being able to join games, which is why you now see the coaches walking behind the players in pro matches nowadays. It was a very controversial change at the time, but in my opinion was very needed shitty hitboxes. I wouldn't exactly call this a bug or a glitch, I guess it kind of is, but the hitboxes in CSGO used to be very horrible, like this horrible. The jumping hitbox was especially worse, having the hitbox way lower than it should have been, and then thankfully they were fixed, but it took them 3 years to finally do so. This next bug was a pretty recent one, being a thing about 7 months ago in May of last year. The R8 bug. This glitcher bug would allow the R8 to basically be able to instantly shoot. This was an advantage of course because the R8 has a double action delay which you have to hold down before you can shoot. Which is unrealistic, just pull the hammer back before you shoot. Anyways, I have no idea how someone discovered how to do this because it is very confusing to do. I would explain how to do this bug but there's probably enough useless information in this video so I'll quickly move on. Spawning in the enemy team spawn glitch. There actually was a way to spawn in the enemy spawn without the use of cheats. I thankfully did not experience this one because it seemed insanely easy to do. This would be accomplished by going to the enemy spawn at the end of the round, then opening up your console to type reset team. You could also bind this to another key if you wanted to make it easier. Typing in reset team would make you not respawn at your team spawn and instead just stay wherever you were at the end of the round. You of course couldn't buy any weapons though because you were not in the buy zone and your health and armor would not reset. Crouch jump exploit. Remember duck peeking from Counter Strike 1 I talked about earlier? Well, it was in CSGO at one point and worked pretty much the exact same. If you crouch, then jumped while crouched, then let go of crouch in midair, you could not only see over cover for information, but the player on the other side couldn't actually see you peek over it. This jump also made no sound when landing, so if you got the jump strat down, you could basically spawn anyone over a wall without them even knowing. Thankfully, this was fixed after it was abused at the 2017 Krakow PGL Major, and I'm sure it was abused a lot of other places as well. C4 Teleportation Glitch This is a very interesting glitch that has not really been talked about. Imagine yourself about to retake site as a CT, and then all of a sudden, the planted C4 teleports to your feet. There is only one video I can find of this happening, but once the C4 is planted here, it appears to teleport right outside a connector on Mirage. The interesting part here though is where the C4 teleported to. It appears to be the same spot the planter was at earlier when a player disconnected, so I assume this glitch was caused by that for some reason. Mirage Wall Glitch This is one I do remember doing. Basically, if you went to this wall on CT side and just crouched and jumped into this corner, you could go through this wall. I have no idea why this was even here, but you could also shoot out of it. I'm not gonna lie, this was actually kind of fun to do, but it was thankfully quickly fixed. Over 25 glitches later, I think I'm about ready to wrap this video up. Like I said, I'm very sure there are way more glitches in Counter-Strike's history that I definitely missed. And hey, if you really want to let people know, leave a comment and hopefully some people learn something new. I'm actually going to start streaming on Twitch soon, so check out my Twitch when you can, and follow my Twitter for updates on all that and more. I also want to quickly thank my YouTube members for sticking around, and I am thinking of bringing back the custom cats for members, but it'll most likely be a more expensive YouTube tier, because they were just so much work to do and to put in the video. Anyways, thank you for making it to the end of this video, I love you all, and I shall see you soon, hopefully.